All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Simon, and I just want to say thanks to the organizers for invite, inviting me. Roughly two years ago, I finished my PhD in zoology at Stockholm University, where I focused on the evolution of uh, life history in fishes, among many other traits that they looked at. So during my PhD, I got interested in questions of animal welfare. And after my PhD, I started working as a researcher for the nonprofit organization Wild Animal Initiative. Our mission is to improve the well being of wild animals by building a research field around wild animal welfare. This presentation will be centered around how to care for invasive species and other wild animals through the establishment of such a research field. But I first want to reiterate a few claims that have been made earlier. And the first one is that individuals have experiences and those experiences matter. What happens to populations or entire ecosystems will affect experiences of individuals, but those phenomena most likely do not have experiences themselves. So while I do think we should care about what happens to ecosystems and populations. I'm primarily concerned about the effects they have on sentient beings such as wild animals and humans. The second point that I would like to make relates to how we think about our obligations towards wild animals. At the moment, we have a fairly human-centered approach to conservation and the management of wild animals in general. So wherever there are apparent conflicts, human interests usually take precedence. But if we think well-being is at all important, we really need to expand our framework to include all sentient wild animals. At the moment, there is some interest in caring for animals that we directly affect, such as invasive species. I think this is great, so don't get me wrong. But I also think the distinction between different wild animals on the basis of our interactions with them is fairly arbitrary. I think that we should care about the well being of all sentient wild animals, where invasive animals are just a special case, where it's perhaps easier to see why we should care since we are the ones um, potentially harming them. To illustrate this, Consider the rabbit hemorrhagic disease virus. It was released by humans in Australia in the 1990s to halt the spread of invasive European rabbits. It was plausibly good from a conservation perspective to release the virus, but in terms of well being, it is certainly less clear. So it caused a lot of suffering to millions of rabbits, given that rabbit hemorrhagic disease seems like a fairly slow and painful way to die. And it can take up to several days for individuals to succumb to the disease. So looking for more humane ways to mitigate conflicts like the one between humans and rabbits is really worthwhile doing, I think. But if we look at the global distribution um, of this disease, we see that it is also common in other parts of the world, including the UK and Sweden, where it evolved and spread without the help of humans. So here's my point. There's nothing fundamentally different about rabbits in Australia and the rabbits in the UK or Sweden. So I think that if we care about the suffering of rabbits, we should care about rabbits no matter where they are or why they are suffering. And that includes rabbits not in Australia that are also suffering from this disease. But this raises a hard question. How? How are we going to promote the well-being of all um, the species depicted in this food web, for instance? Ecosystems are extremely complex. And we often don't fully understand what effects our actions will have, making some individuals uh, or species better off. One at a time will be hard, but comparatively easy. 
we know quite well how to help humans humans flourish, for instance. But when it comes to all sentient wild animals, the problem gets significantly more complex. And we currently know very little about the welfare of most wild animals. Now, some might be tempted to throw up their hands and say we can't do it. But I think our track record as a civilization tells us something different. Most things we take, <clears throat> excuse me, we take for granted today would probably look like magic to someone living a few hundred years ago. And that is because of oops, science. Even if we don't know um, to what extent we will succeed, I think the stakes are too high for us to give up before we even properly tried. Who knows what we will have discovered 50 years or 100 years from now if we put our minds to it. So what exactly do we need to do? I think we need to build a field focused solely on wild animal welfare. And welfare biology is one suggested name for that. It would draw on knowledge from many different disciplines, such as ecology, veterinary science, neuroscience, to name a few. But it would also be distinct from other fields in certain ways, I think. Um, there are three main questions that I imagine such a field would grapple with. And those are, which species are sentient? What are their lives like? And finally, how can humans responsibly improve their welfare? We are currently working to facilitate this, the growth of this field by building a network of interested researchers, helping them get funding, providing contacts, and providing support for young researchers interested in working on wild animal welfare. So if you're interested in doing wild animal welfare research or simply want to know more about what we do, have a look at our website or you can also send me an email if you want. Yeah, that's it for me. So uh, thanks for listening. <laughs>